Hey everybody, Jason Wright with another episode of ThreatWise TV. And today I'm joined with my friend Randy Birdsale, and we're going to be talking about App D, App Dynamics, Application Dynamics, uh, an organization and a technology that we have uh, begun to spin up and, and uh, get going. Randy, tell me about some of the latest developments and, and especially I know that this is mapping out what our applications are looking like and all the facets and the interdependencies. I've seen a lot of that from Tetration. So how does this product differ from Tetration and how do they uh, uh, work together or, or do they at all? Yeah, that's a great question, Jason. Um, so there's a ton of amazing stuff coming out of AppDynamics right now, um, all around full stack observability. So it's always been there to help our customers and the applications they care about most. And what we've most recently introduced is the ability to get security insights in addition to all of your business insights that you traditionally have gotten from AppD. So bringing those two worlds together, it's kind of like peanut butter and jelly, right? It makes the perfect sandwich because now you get that full understanding of what the risk is introduced into your applications, what events are occurring from a security perspective that could be impacting the user experience. Uh, and, and end users have like a one-stop shop for that inside out security view. Now you asked something really interesting, Jason, you said, you know, what about Tetration or secure workload? Um, in reality, they are complementary. They exist together because they provide different perspectives for different personas. With secure workload, you're actually looking from the outside in at the application. What is the behavior of this application within the operating system? What communication is it making with the outside world? Now, when you look at um, Cisco secure application, that's inside the app. So it's inside out security. It is looking at what is this application doing inside? What functions are being called? Um, what is it doing based on the stimuli provided from the outside, an inbound request? What, what happens within inside that app? And then what makes the app itself? Like what components, what libraries, for instance, are included in there that might introduce vulnerabilities into your application? That sounds like uh, we're getting very deep into the level, like maybe more so than even a, just an agent, but actually something that's looking at uh, the actual code that's executing. Is that is that accurate? That 100%. Like we're in runtime. We are seeing line of code execution within these applications. Um, it's something that people who have built apps and instrumented them with things like APMs or application performance management tools like AppDynamics have known and loved for a long time. But from a security perspective, it's like getting like keys to the kingdom, like seeing the amount of detail and telemetry you can get out of an app for a security person, it's 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 really kind of mind blowing. I'm eager to show it to you. Kind of the visibility that we need. Well, let's, speaking of visibility, show it to me. Let's jump into the demo and show us what we've got here. All right, so I think it's important to start off with, given the audience, I'm gonna guess that most of these folks probably haven't spent time playing with app dynamics um, much. So. This is like the, the, the one landing spot that most of the people, and these are gonna be in IT ops or app ops, will spend their time triaging the health of their application. And it gives them a really amazing perspective of all of those components that comprise their app. Now, you might think, oh, app, you know, an app is just a single application you spin up. In reality, modern architectures have a ton of microservices, and that's what each one of these green circles are. Lots and lots of microservices, all doing their very unique function. And you'll see things like some of them are written in Go, Golang, some of them are written in Java. They're all gonna be written in the language that best suits the function that they need to perform. And we have visibility to all of that with the APM agents that are inside the application in each one of these microservices. And we also have like an N plus one view. So we don't just see the things that you've instrumented, but what are you communicating that next level beyond? What databases are you communicating? What queries are you actually making to the database? Like that's kind of unprecedented amount of data we're getting access to. What APIs are you able to see that are being externally, uh, external APIs you're consuming? Um, what message buses are you using? All of that is seen and mapped out and we get a quick view of the health, right? Now the IT ops person is gonna be looking at this particular application we've got stood up here and saying that everything looks pretty green. Green is good, right? So they're gonna be in a pretty good mood except for the security events. So now that we've got that directly embedded in here, they can go and start tackle some of these other things that normally they would have no visibility to. They'd be in the dark on. Now, this person triaging the health of their app is gonna say, I've got security events and I need to go look into these immediately because I've got six critical issues, right? So when they pivot over into the critical issues, they're gonna see all of these vulnerabilities within their applications. And at this point, 
you've already kind of blown a lot of people's mind because what we've done is taken these vulnerabilities, which normally were thrown over the fence from the security team to the app team without a lot of context and actually corresponding them to the naming conventions used by the app teams. What is the name of the application, right? What is the microservice name? Not just the URL that's coming in from the front end, but like deep down into the app, what actually is this thing you're talking about that has a vulnerability? We give that mapping and correlation because we're already in the app with AppD. So now we have that. We also can start assigning some priority to some of these vulnerabilities. We've got over here under the severity, we've got all these criticals, right? Criticals, red, bad, we need to do something, but especially ones that have these little icons on them because we can correlate when these vulnerabilities are actually being exploited. So now we know that this particular vulnerability was exploited within this particular microservice. And if I wanted to dive into that, I could switch over to the attack details view and see that specific attack that exploited that vulnerability in the microservice, okay? This screen is one of my favorites because it does a whole lot for a whole lot of different personas. So first off, the person triaging this problem is gonna look at this and understand what parts of the app were impacted and who they need to go reach out to. And who are they gonna reach out to? This is the other persona this screen helps is the SecOps team, incident response. Like, hey, we've got an active exploit on an application. They're gonna to wanna to come in and say, what just happened, right? How about with a one click, we can tell them exactly what happened. What if we were able to say, we saw that request come in and then trigger spinning up a new process. And it looks, I can tell you exactly what they were trying to download and what they were trying to do in that command. From a forensic standpoint, you already know exactly what they've done. Instead of you having to comb through logs, hoping that you've got them, we'll give it to you right here in this view. So SecOps Instant Response, they're gonna be thrilled. Now, other personas, we've got the dev team and the AppSec team. Normally when they've got a vulnerability that's been exploited, they have to go correlate in their own minds based on logs, based on some assumptions where that sits in their app. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and give them a stack trace, right? Let's give them the, the stuff that they care about, code line visibility to, oh, here we go. It's this particular method that actually was uh, vulnerable and then exploited. So I can go and fix my app the way it needs to be fixed without me having to try to figure out where that problem might exist. So everyone at this point is super happy, except for the app teams and the AppSec teams, because they have time crunch, right? They know what to go fix, but they have to do it quickly. What if the SecOps team could come in and say, you know what, I'm gonna give you a policy that will actually buy you the time you need to fix it without having to worry about your uh, backlog, right? Most of these app teams have features they need to deliver. That's how a company differentiates itself. So they wanna buy time, get the features they need to to market, fix the vulnerability when it makes the most sense, because sometimes it requires a major overhaul of your code. So SecOps can come in here and define some policy. They could say, you know what, remote code execution, either we don't want it at all, we're gonna block it everywhere, which obviously highly recommended, but if you've got scenarios you want to keep it enabled, you want to have a tailored policy to your application environment, great. Define your policy based on the app names and microservices that your app teams are defining, and then change that to a block. At this point, you're now blocking remote code execution for that particular app. You bought time for the app teams to solve the problem in a way that makes sense for them. Now, Jason, I'm guessing you're thinking, okay, I know apps, they've got hundreds of vulnerabilities. Like what does an AppSec person do when they like handed, here's five vulnerabilities, which one do you go fix? I'll be honest, and a lot of the folks that I talk to, they're like, I don't know, I, I, ha I need some help with that. And so we wanna provide some guidance and assistance to those AppSec people who are dealing with a prioritization effort that can sometimes take 50% of their time. They've got all of these components of their apps that could be vulnerable and they have to figure out where do I spend my energy. One, we wanna correlate those components like the third-party libraries to the app architecture so they can understand which one is gonna impact their business the most, right? So for instance, if this particular application is critical to me, I wanna focus my energy on these particular uh, libraries components. When I look over here at the risks factor, we're able to tell them very clearly that the risk score is off the charts for this first one. Let's tackle this one first. It's gonna be the biggest return on our investment. And then when you dive down deep into this one, you'll actually see this one contains the same vulnerability that was exploited. So they're making sure they're prioritizing their time right, solving the problems that matter for the business at the time that makes sense, and removing tons of friction that typically exists between those app teams and security teams by just giving them shared context and the information they need when they need it. 
I couldn't be more excited about this product. I, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm giddy with excitement, Jason. And I didn't even give you a chance to talk, but that's, uh, that's you what such a good job, man. I just wanted to let you cruise through because you were nailing it. And, and I can nice. definitely hear the passion and the excitement. Uh, I'm, I'm loving it. You know, as a, as a IPS guy, an IDS guy, I'm seeing a lot of similarities from what we do from a network perspective, where it's about visibility into what's happening, then you can apply control. So looking into what you've got and the more visibility you have and the deeper level you are with your with your ability to analyze the code, then you can start to see what's going on, you can make better decisions, and you can even start to prioritize events based on severity by uh, correlating that information. But it all starts with visibility before you can have that control. And that's what you uh, you seem to have been building here from an application perspective as opposed to a network perspective with the IDS. So yeah. this has been fantastic, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, I wanna make sure that everybody knows there's a lot more information out there. If you want to check out uh, the website is appdynamics.com. You'll see a whole lot of different resources and information out there. You can even look into a free trial. And of course, if you want to learn more about uh, Cisco and workload and all the other things that we're doing around data centers and applications and uh, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud, you can check out ThreatWise TV episodes always at cisco.com slash go slash ThreatWise. So Randy, thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. And everybody, you stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next episode of ThreatWise TV.